Awesome, glad you're here. Bear, look who's here. We're so glad you've joined us for Storytime with Miss Becky. I'm Miss Becky, and here's our friend Bear. He would like to introduce his friend, Pete the Cat, to you. Now, some of you may know about Pete the Cat. He is cool, and his favorite word is groovy, and that means cool. And you know what he, else he loves? This shirt he's wearing with the four amazing buttons on it. So I wore my sweater with buttons too, just to enjoy having crazy buttons on me. No, forget that. <laughs> so here is Pete the cat, and let's count how many buttons he has on his favorite shirt. One, two, three, four, but whoops, this one's missing. Now, sometimes I cry when I lose something, do you? But you know what, Pete the Cat doesn't. He just starts singing his song. Let's find out what happens when Pete the Cat keeps losing another button. What's he gonna do? Let's put on the magic glasses and find out. Pete the Cat and his four groovy buttons. Pete the Cat and His Four Groovy Buttons, story by Eric Litwin. Pete the Cat put on his favorite shirt with four big, colorful, round, groovy buttons. He loved his buttons so much. He sang this song. My buttons, my buttons, my four groovy buttons. My buttons, my buttons, my four groovy buttons. Pop! Oh no! One of the buttons popped off and rolled away. How many buttons are left? Three! Four minus one is three. One, two, three. Did Pete cry? Goodness no. Buttons come and buttons go. He kept on singing his song. My buttons come, my buttons go, my buttons, my buttons, my three groovy buttons, my buttons, my buttons, my three groovy buttons. Pop! Oh no! Another button popped off and rolled away. How many buttons are left? Two! Did Pete cry? Goodness no! Buttons come and buttons go. He kept on singing his song. My buttons, my buttons, my two groovy buttons. My buttons, my buttons, my two groovy buttons. Oh, look at that ice cream truck. Pop! Oh no! Another button popped off and rolled away. How many buttons are left? One. Two minus one equals one. Did Pete cry? Goodness, no. Buttons come and buttons go. He kept on singing his song. My button, my button, my one groovy button. My button, my button, my one groovy button. Pop! Oh no. The last button popped off and rolled away. How many buttons are left? One minus one equals zero. Did Pete cry? Goodness, no. Buttons come and buttons go. Pete looked down at his buttonless shirt, and what do you think he saw? His belly button. And he kept on singing his song. It's all good. My button, my button. Still have my belly button. My button, my button. Still have my belly button. The end. Well, the next time you lose something, are you going to be like Pete the Cat and sing a song? I hope so. Because things do come and things do go. But look around, maybe you'll find something that you're really glad you have. Do you have a subject in school that you don't like very much? Well, Bear does, and it's math. Pete the Cat has a friend who does not like math too. So Pete the Cat 
gets a really great idea on how to make learning fun. Let's put on the magic reading glasses and we're going to read the story about how Pete the Cats got class. Pete the Cats Got Class by James Dean. It's math time, says Pete's teacher, Mr. G. Pete the Cat loves math. He loves how the numbers work together. If I add three red blocks and four yellow blocks together, how many blocks would we have in all? says Mr. G. Pete raises his hand. Seven blocks, says Pete. Three plus four equals seven. Very good, Pete, says Mr. G. Mr. G asks the cat a, sub a subtraction question. If I take two blocks away from seven blocks, how many blocks will be left? Pete raises his hand but the teacher calls on Tom. Nine, says Tom. Pete feels bad for Tom. Tom is super smart. He can name all the dinosaurs. He just has trouble with math. Pete has an idea. He will help Tom become awesome at math. Helping is cool. On the bus home from school, Pete sits next to Tom. Do you want to come over to play, Tom asks. I got some cool new race cars for my birthday. Awesome, says Pete. We can do our math homework, and then we can race the cars. I hate math, says Tom. You don't hate math, Pete tells Tom. You just don't love it yet. Pete sets up some blocks. If I add five blue blocks and three orange blocks together, how many blocks will I have in all? This is boring, says Tom. Can't we play with my race cars? This gives Pete a great idea. Sure we can, he says. Pete lines up some race cars. If five red race cars are going to the racetrack and five yellow cars are going to the car wash. How many cars are on the road, he asks. Easy, says Tom. Ten cars, like a traffic jam. Now, what if two of the cars stayed home, Pete says. How many cars would be left? Hmm, says Tom, studying the lineup. Eight cars. Right, says Pete. See, I told you that math is awesome. Pete quizzes Tom on one math problem after the next. Four cars minus one. Three, says Tom. Eight cars plus seven, says Pete. Fifteen says Tom. I can't believe it. I'm doing math and I'm loving it. Pete and Tom do their homework. Let me know if you need my help, says Pete. Thanks, says Tom, but I know what I'm doing now. The next day, Pete hands in his math homework. Tom does too. After lunch, the teacher passes back their assignment. Pete and Tom each got one wrong. I'd like to see you two after class, Mr. G says. You both know not to copy someone else's homework, says Mr. G. We didn't copy, says Pete. You both got the exact same answer wrong, Mr. G tells them. How can we prove that we got the answers on our own, says Tom. I know, Pete tells him. Bring your race cars to school tomorrow. 
Why? Tom asks. You'll see, says Pete with a smile. The next day, Pete and Tom get to school early. What are all the race cars for? asks Mr. G. To show you how Tom got to be so good at math, says Pete. Give Tom a math problem, Pete says. Any math problem. I'll get it right, says Tom, without Pete's help. Mr. G gives Tom one math problem after the other, and Tom uses the race cars to get all the answers right. Wow, says Mr. G, I am impressed. Pete helped me by making math fun, Tom says. I think that's something we can all learn from Pete, Mr. G says. Take it from Pete, math is neat. Well, sometimes the students can help the teacher learn something, right? Wasn't that a great suggestion to use race cars when Tom was having a problem understanding adding and subtracting? Do you have a friend who might need some help? Remember Pete the Cat and how he made learning fun. Today, Bear asked if we could read a book about a playground that Pete the Cat wanted to make. He wanted to make the very best playground ever for recess. So let's put on the magic reading glasses and find out what is going to happen at this playground. The story is called Construction Destruction. What? Wait a minute. What's the opposite of construction? Destruction. We better find out what happens at this playground. Let's open the book and find out. Pete the Cat. Construction. Destruction. Recess, Pete shouts as the bell rings. But when Pete gets outside to play, oh no. The playground is a disaster. The swings are broken. The slide is rusty. And the sandbox is full of weeds. Pete makes plans for a new playground. Wow, says Principal Nancy. Can you really build that? Not by myself, says Pete. I'm going to need some help. Whatever you need, Pete, it's yours. The next day, Pete arrives at the playground before school. The construction crew is already there. He gives them the go-ahead to tear down the old playground. Rumble, rumble, honk, honk. Creak, crash. Down goes the slide. Clink, clank. Down go the swings. Bang, boom. Down goes the tower. Honk, honk. A truck arrives to recycle the metal. Good to recycle. Rumble, rumble, honk, honk. The new playground equipment has arrived. It's time to get to work. The cement mixer will pour concrete. The dump truck will bring sand and dirt. The backhoe will dig. The whole team will get the job done. Clunk, whack, thud. Building a playground is hard work. The new playground is cool, but it's not cool enough. What do you think? Pete asks, holding up his latest plans. It will be too hard to build, says one of the workers. And everything is almost finished, says another. But it will make this the best playground ever, Pete says. Then let's do it, the workers say. Screwdrivers twist in screws. Wrenches tighten the nuts. The workers try to make everything perfect. Hooray! The new playground is ready! Everyone is amazed. 
until creek. Creek, creek. Smash, crunch, thud. Oh no, says Principal Nancy as the new playground crashes to the ground. The pieces are all mixed up. <gasps> Everyone is disappointed, except for Keith. It's not how we planned it, Pete shouts. It's even better. This playground is filled with surprises and places to explore. The school playground is the most amazing playground ever. Sometimes you've got to dare to dream big. So the next time your construction turns into destruction, see if you can remember Pete the Cat and how he saw things in a whole new way. See you next time.